Diwali Park because I was born in Diwali. For thousands of years, the new moon between mid-October and mid-November has signaled the start of this holiday. It was once a fall harvest festival. But as Indians moved from agriculture to industry, it became better known as a physical new year, a time for merchants and traders to close their ledger books and start fresh. Festivals, like everything else, evolve over a period of time. And Diwali has also evolved. It is a Hindu festival of national stature. And it's closest to Christmas in terms of its importance for Hindus. Diwali is a celebration of good over evil and light over dark. A victory played out through numerous mythological stories. In one part of the country, the story is told of Lord Rama defeating Ravan, the ten-headed demon. In another, it is the defeat of the wicked demon Narakasura by Lord Krishna. All over India, in little towns and even in the villages, you have the theatrical reenactment of the whole legend and the whole story. Every child incorporates the values that are being articulated in the story as part of their consciousness. It's a mythical, historical hybrid of uh, adventure, mystery, magic, and spiritual teachings. It's an amazing festival because in that one festival, you, in fact, relive something that has gone on generation after generation. As the stories are passed from one generation to the next, so are the traditions. And everywhere, from India to the United States, similar rituals are observed. City streets like this one in New Delhi are crowded with people shopping for new clothes. Store windows are decorated with holiday images. Many purchase jewelry or new pots and pans as a symbol of wealth and prosperity in the new year. There are bakeries packed with pastries and sweets, street vendors' carts overflowing with nuts and fruit. My parents used to bring gifts for all the help in the house for all the servants, and they would give them uh, increases in their salary. They would buy them gifts. They would buy them new clothes. They would buy them uh, sweetmeats and things. There's a lot of celebration. There's a lot of partying. There's also a lot of gambling. The gambling is its reminiscent of the uh, playing of dice between Lord Shiva and uh, Parvati, his consort, uh, on Mount Kailash. For the businessman, it's also an acknowledgement of his success and the fact that he can now take risks. Cleaning the house is, is an important element of Diwali, as you would for any important festival, because obviously you're going to be entertaining and you have people coming over. Um, but also because there is this element of getting the house ready for the goddess to inspect it and to bless it. For many, that goddess is Lakshmi. She is the goddess of wealth and prosperity, an important deity to honor during the physical new year. Lakshmi obviously will not enter a home that is sloppy or untidy or not properly, properly kept. So you have this theme of renewing or cleaning or, you know, sweeping away the old and starting with the new. Some of that renewal happens with prayer. For many members of the large Indian community in Queens, New York, part of Diwali is celebrated in temple. Business owners often bring their new ledger books with them, hoping to be blessed with success in the new year. They pray for wealth by honest means. At home, the Sunarayan family continues their prayers with what is known as puja. Beautifully dressed and decorated gods are worshipped with light, incense, food, and music. Oh. 
Commonly, it is Ganesh, the elephant-headed god known to be a remover of obstacles who is worshipped, along with Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth. But on Diwali, other deities can be worshipped. My mother, when I was a child, said, Deepak, if you really want to have a lot of success in life, then you should choose Saraswati, the goddess of wisdom. And Lakshmi will get jealous, and then you can consort with uh, Saraswati, and Lakshmi will just follow you wherever you go. It's happened. <laughs> To guide the goddess through the dark moonless night, hundreds of little oil lights called diyas are lit and placed on windowsills and porches. People fill the streets with celebratory fireworks and sizzling sparkles. Deepavali, the row of lights has arrived. That's one of my most fresh memories of Diwali, having these puljaris, which literally means flower wands, because when you light them, the sparkles look like flower bursts. I think it's connected with joy and just being rambunctious and happy and, you know, let your hair down and just make a lot of noise and run around. So that's, you know, it's kind of like July 4th and uh, a couple of other festivals rolled into one, I'd say, Diwali. When we return, New Year in America, tracing the origins of our country's most celebrated traditions. Every culture celebrates its new year in a different way. The Chinese have symbolic feasts and colorful festivals. The Jews, a solemn day of prayer. Hindus light up the night in honor of their goddess. Americans celebrate New Year's in their own unique ways, with lively countdowns and free-flowing champagne, colorful parades, and athletic competitions. And now, here is Mr. New Year's Eve himself, Guy Lombardo. Many of these things are done year after year out of habit, and few people know that even our most original customs are based on centuries-old tradition. We drink champagne and toast to the new year in the same way that the 18th century English drank from the famous wassail bowl, spiced ale, that would be shared with the wish, was hail, Gaelic for good health. In the mid-1700s, New Yorkers borrowed from Chinese tradition and began using fireworks to welcome the New Year. Celebrations got so rowdy that in 1773, the legislature outlawed firecrackers, homemade bombs, and the firing of personal shotguns to commemorate all future New Years. It wasn't until 1907 when the New York Times started the Times Square New Year's Eve Ball that the city was once again lit up in celebration. For some, New Year's Day wouldn't be complete without a parade. On the East Coast, there's the Philadelphia Mummers Parade. Officially organized in 1901, the parade stems from old European traditions of merrymaking on New Year's Day. In medieval England, men dressed in costumes and masks and went from house to house presenting plays in exchange for food or drink. Today, it continues with elaborate costumes, festive music, and spectacular dancing. On the West Coast, the festivities are just as colorful and the origins even older. The Tournament of Roses started on January 1st, 1890, when the members of the Valley Hunt Club in Pasadena, California, decorated their carriages with flowers to celebrate the abundance of ripening oranges. The 
ancient Babylonians had done the same thing on New Year's thousands of years before.